Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today I'm going to bring you a very special video about Baby Audio's new plugin called Transit. Now, I just wanted to wait to make this video after the YouTube embargo was off because I wanted to see what YouTubers and the synthfluencers and the audio influencers were going to say in their videos uh, because I expected them to say um, the typical thing about the plugin being really cool for transit, for transitions. However, I did see a few takes in the comments of these videos regarding that you can emulate transit with a simple uh, patch or patch inside FL Studio or inside Ableton Rack. So I wanted to um, make a video regarding that topic because I want to show you guys some of the things you cannot do within Patcher and within the Ableton Rack that you can do inside transit because whoever's telling you that you can you can use or recreate everything within an, an image on patcher or within a transit. Um, they're not completely lying to you, but they are very, very being very misleading because there are certain functionalities that you are simply not going to have within patcher or within um, the racks inside Ableton. So I know um, you can actually, you know, make a patcher that has reverb, delay, and whatnot. And I'll actually show you that in this video as well. And that works very fine, but there's some things that you simply just cannot do. So I'm going to talk about some of those features here. Okay, let's go ahead and play back a little bit of the track right here. So we'll play a little part here, which is the first build. Okay, so there you go. You got a gist of what we have in the song. Now, what I will do is, and this quick start guide and actually restart the plugin. So this, okay. Why does it keep doing that? Okay, there's a dark color scheme, light color scheme. Anyway, so let's go ahead and automate this. And you can see from the get-go, <laughs> we have a classic preset loaded, which is the white noise effect. And what we can do is we could put it on the drop and actually do think I have something like that in my drop. You see that? So this is a great example because in this track, I already had to make something similar to what Transit gives us. And let's see, we got a gross speed, we got a vintage phaser, a 40 reverb 2, and a Pro Q3. So I needed three different plugins or four different plugins to actually create this effect. Whereas if I loaded an instance of Transit, let's copy paste it over here. It's already loaded there from the get-go. So all I have to do is th uh, push this up and let's see, let's automate this in FL. Let's press Control D. Let's go to Drop One or a little before, and then what I'll do is I'll engage my tools. Last week, create automation clip. And we got that clip right there. And what I'll do is I'll make it go from there to have a little slow rise and then a smooth little decline. And of course, we're running um, the old noise that I had in here, which is these guys. So what I'll do is I'll just mute them. So we, so all we hear is a uh, transit. Okay.
So I'll turn this into a... Let's see. Can we do noise? Noise. There we go. And then what I'll do... I really don't know how to stop that. Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll use the OTT as a... As a gain right here. And actually, we have a utility here too. So let's put the gain down maybe minus 60 dB. Okay, let's hear in the context of the track. do this So there you go, super easy to use. And we already put it in the context of the track. And, you know, even as I was explaining to you, this, that, that time it took me to set up that one transit is what have taken me basically to reset every single plugin. So if it took me uh, maybe two minutes to dot in that perfect sound with transit, it would have taken me eight to 10 minutes to do the perfect sound here with the effects, with dragging in these audio clips, you know, as you can see here, I had already sidechained this, this noise beforehand. So I had to bake it into my audio. And over here, I don't have to bake it into my audio. And it's always going to be tempo sick to whatever track I use. If I wanted to, let's say, um, let's do macros. Let's switch all audit, uh, clips to real-time stretching. Okay. And then we move this to 44 or 50 or 150 BPM. My audio is going to sound a little wonky. Well, it sounds pretty good in the phone now, but it's not going to sound the same as the stuff coming out of transit. So let's go. Okay, cool. Now let's pay back that, but using transit and using the previous audio effects and the scene right there. Oh. There you go. It sounds fantastic. Whatever BPM you you play back at, the time stretching and FL didn't do that bad. But the sound quality within, you know, using the actual noise itself um, or the noise isolator itself, you can't really beat that. So yes, um, trans is going to beat 100% every time you're going to load a audio sample in there. It's going to beat it. So um, yeah, that's one other thing you, where you can't really say, oh, I'll just put it a hard baked audio sample there. And then if I change the BPM, it's still going to miraculously sound good. It's not. So that's another uh, reason why transit's not really gimmicky as per se. And again, if I were to actually do this using my own synth, I would have to load perhaps a 3X oscillator within FL Studio and use these other plugins to get that same effect, which over here, look, 
We got the noise, reverb, delay, OTT, pump, you know. I, I probably, you know, instead of using the delay to get the exact same sound, I'd probably use a phaser over here. So let's see, we got flanger. And we got a phaser right there. So I'm covered by transit. So that's, you know, another aspect. Here's another aspect where, like I said previously, that um, you can't really do this within Ableton's rack or FL's patcher. And that's just simply grabbing these guys and just swapping them over. It's that easy to do. If I were, were to do this within a patcher, oof, okay, let me, not that I have money complaints about patcher because it's already a great system to work in. It's just that it's not a third-party VST to do these type of things. Um, let's see, I got a filter here. Here we go. We got a sweet filter. This is a really cool little plugin. Um, I've also got, let's see, Steel Tricks plugin that I made a couple years ago. And this would be something that's more attuned to what uh, we have here. And look at this. So it looks like that behind. Let's tweak, stick to that sweet filter though, because um, that's already kind of set up to do what, what I want in this instance. In this case, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply this to the whole track. So I'm gonna go from, let's see, bar 41, and I'll create automation clip right here. Okay. Create automation clip. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's do one more, but one with a hard cut like around here, right here. Okay, so there's my patcher plugin. Um, I made this many years ago. Uh, actually, you can see that there's a Proki 2 here. There's a Reverb 2. There's a Parametric EQ 2 right here. There's a Fruity Delay. And there's a Chorus over here, which is not part of the entire patch, but it's still there. It's like a vestigial part. And I have a Panomatic that, again, is kind of vestigial because I didn't add it. So, it's basically like we're using reverb and a free delay along with EQs. Now, if I wanted to swap these out, I, I can't simply do what I can do with transit. Let's do this with transit. Let's clear these out. Okay, so we clear them out. And to recreate what I did here with Patcher, I'll have to do this. Um, we got reverb. Or to start off with delay here. Delay, reverb. Filter. And in this case, I think we might be doing is it 12? Not uh, 24. We're doing 24s. So let's put another 24 over here. Ah, I guess you can't pick the same filter type. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So in this case, let's do a... We'll do a high pass for that one. And right here will be a low pass, okay? So I can do this and do that, just like I can do with my sweet filter. Now, with the sweet filter little plugin that we made here a couple years ago, um, we had to manually activate this and map it, right? So we have to come over here and drag it over here and find the parameter that we want to activate, which is the first band, right click and set it to activate, right? And then after it's activated, then I grab that node and drag it over here. So that's all that work for just the one parameter. So yeah, 
so the while it takes roughly maybe 20 minutes to set that up it took us what like a couple seconds to pull up all these plugins at the same time and now i can use this you know to you know affect all the different plugins let's give it a try right here let's uh loop that same section and uh create an automation clip And I'll do something similar to what I did earlier. Let's mute the other one. And let's also mute that patcher. Let's look at transit. Let's just move the cutoff over here all the way down because or else it's gonna be, you know, cut. And let's go ahead and play back. So that's pretty good already. Let's just make this really, really obvious like it did with the sweet filter. Let's make it very aggressive. Um, and then feedback a little bit more. And with the reverb, what I'll do is I'll uh, lower the tone of it. So I'll do that. Make it dynamic. Actually, it should be the opposite way. And there you go. Okay. That was super easy to do. It it would have probably taken me 30 seconds to do this if I was not recording on video and explaining what I'm doing. So that's why this plugin is really, really cool and really important. Um, it doesn't try to give you um, a step so you can share one not. And, you know, or, you know, you do have these step controls, but you're not getting this super eccentric sequencer you're getting the ability to do a quick transition lob and control many different parameters at once. Um, I think it's a killer thing. Again, if I were to do this with Patcher, and if I were to do from scratch, you know, just simply doing this for the reverb, let's go ahead and break it down. Let's add a fruity reverb 2. Reverb 2. Okay. Let's add a surface. Let's add a, let's see, a knob. Let's do a default knob. Resize that. Okay. Press, go back to the map. Of course, we got to activate this first though. Activate. Now we got that knob right there. We're going to go to the mix, right click and activate it. Control that right there. And then let's say I wanted to also increase the, the decay. Right click and activate the value. Change our parameter. Okay, that's just for the reverb. Okay, it took me, you know, I'm qu pretty quick at this, so it didn't take me that long. I could change the curve right here by right clicking. And type in the value or overriding. or the link to controller here, I can change the, the mapping formula. So this is something I can do with an NFL that you cannot do in an Ableton rack. So that's one way Patrick does beat the Ableton rack. But anywho, okay, let's add the delay. Three, okay. Let's go feedback level, activate it. Uh, dry, activate, and the wet, activate, let's bring that down though, activate, 
So let's modulate the reverb and the output wet. Okay. Sorry, the feedback. Okay. So there you go. We <laughs> to do all that, we had to go through a, a couple different hurdles. And this is hard to set now. Now we can no longer do what we did earlier, which was uh, go to transit and change the positioning of this. Uh, I guess the closest way we could do this with patcher would be to drag this right here into the free delay and have it like that. So I guess we could create a switch eventually, you know, and we could create a switch, but then that would require uh, knowledge of math. And not everyone has knowledge of math like that. And no one has, not everyone has the time to actually go and remake all this. If you do, all the power for you. I'm pretty sure uh, Nano Spiral could probably do this because she's awesome. But it'd be very difficult to recreate it in such a manner where you can simply just drag and drop across. Okay. Now. Yeah, that's that was my rant for Patcher. Now for Ableton Rack, yeah, you can simply not change your curves here and end the discussion. That's, you know, game set match. You, you don't need to grab audio to create noise effects or synth effects, you know, as you saw earlier. You don't need, um, you know, to worry about swapping plugins over because you automatically can do it like that. And you got the curves which is very, very important. Not only that, but you have the option to change from a static motion or from static to motion to a dynamic control. It's amazing. Simply put, it's one of those plugins that is so simple that seems really gimmicky, but it's, it's really not. Um, I think I'm going to do a separate video where I explain um, the sequencer and another video where I actually show you this in the context of sound design and batch processing. For those of you who don't know, batch processing, processing is when you grab many different files, sometimes hundreds, hundreds of files, and run them through a processor all at once. Um, you see this happen for movies and uh, audio restoration a lot, but it also can be applied for sample design and um, you know sound design. Yeah, we didn't even look at any of the presets, but you know, there's so many other plugins uh, or many other videos that cover the plugin during uh, when the embargo was lifted that already covered all those uh, features and all those presets. So I don't want to do it in this case. Um, you can go see Andrew Hong's video or you can go see an uh, actual um, uh, are my video from from a buddy here at music marketing eric eric did a wonderful video where he covers some of the presets here and he makes a preset himself so this video i wanted to create as a counter argument for um, those who are saying oh we can make this with an ableton rack or we can recreate it with patcher or we can recreate it using uh you know some you know whatever is built into my dw you know or i can remake this you know, on a uh on a single track, mixer track on my master channel or my group channel, and I can reload it every time. Well, sorry to break it to you, but you're gonna have to cre be creating those automations over and over again. And you should still not get the, you know, the detailed control you have with baby audio, where you ha can have control over the linearity. Yes, you can do that with automation, but that would be very, very tedious work. Anyway, I want to end the video like this. It's already going to be long enough. So I hope you enjoyed the video, that you learned something new today. And make sure you um, give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this on educational topics um, about the music tech uh, space uh, here at Music Marketing TV. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.